All right, so apparently we have to watch the biggest failure one first. That's fine. I'm very tired. That mage game killed everything I had going for me. Chill, 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 chill. So Hearthstone's biggest failures. I can name a couple. Starts with an M. Ends with a Ursinary. It is movie time. All right, guys. I'll sit back and enjoy these popcorns. My name is Bot Mathematician. And this is Holloman, sir. Also welcome the daring reporter, Dora. We are infinitely grateful that we have another opportunity to see you all again. You put so much effort itself, into these edits. And it's not clickbait. This fact was first announced five years ago in a report by the analytical company Superdata. <laughs> we live in the games as a service era. This business model allows developers to monetize video Hello, games Jinx. after their release in the long run. The main indicator of the success of games as a service Hello, is White not Boo. popularity, fan loyalty or critical acclaim, but profit, only profit. If profits increase then other factors are almost Hello, irrelevant. Other White Boo. Players money works like a healing elixir that allows games Hello, to White prolong Boo. life as well as to receive excess profits for investors and auctioneers. Even if the developers have a popular franchise and manage to create addictive gameplay, subsequent support for the game is like a long distance race. It is extremely difficult to create regular interesting content and encourage players to keep spending money. Moreover, the subsequent support of the project requires huge investments. Under these conditions, most gameplay innovations should be created in terms of profitability, which means earning player loyalty is also a challenge. Players will demand more and more content over time, it will be harder to surprise them with each new expansion, subsequently, even a small gameplay- <laughs> It had TFT when Deja was broken. It had like a little thing in there. But anyway, what it's saying is like the way that games work now are not the same way that games have worked previously in the past. As we known for the longest time when like consoles were king, right? And everybody didn't have like a pretty good PC. Um, was you bought like a $60 game or a $40 game and that was pretty much it, right? Like there was nothing past that game that there was things to spend money on. Therefore, companies had to make these like pretty decent games enough that you'd spend 40 to 60 dollars on you get enough playability out of that 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 purchase was worth it for you then dlcs came along and stuff like that where like you paid 60 dollars for the game and then there was like 10 or 15 dollar dlc where you got everything created after that uh halo had this for like a map pack and it was like five dollars and you got a shit ton for it and over time this has like gotten worse and worse right where you're spending more to basically get less. Now there's like a season pass that you have to pay for that comes out like after a game comes out that gives you like, it's like another $60. You're basically spending two $60 increments to get what would be previously a full game. You're getting half a game on release and half a game after as they push content out as a way for them to make more money off of you from that one game. Then we move to like Fortnite and valorant and tft and all these games that doesn't cost anything to play right there's no upfront fee it's a free game right like league of legends and he was mentioning how like how do you get something that is a free game how can you make money off of it and why they're so popular right well they're popular because they're free and all the things that you can buy in the game are first of all not that expensive you know anywhere between like two to eight dollar increments uh and they matter a lot they look good and they're, it's it's quality that you're getting right like people wouldn't buy all those fortnite skins and tft skins and league skins if they weren't good enough to buy and we've seen that with stuff like Overwatch. Overwatch wasn't good enough to buy. And you know why? Because it was trash for the price tag. You weren't getting, for the price tag of Overwatch, it wasn't worth it. And that's why it died. That's why no one played it. And Overwatch 2, which is just Overwatch, they didn't do anything different. It's literally the same game. They just rebranded it, pretending it's Overwatch 2. It's got a free tag. And look at the game. It's doing great, right? So... Just a different era we live in in regards to gaming. Play mistake can lead to a significant decrease in interest resulting in a loss of profit. Today, we'll use earnings data to try to determine which Blizzard decisions led to the biggest financial failures in the game's history. Unfortunately, Blizzard carefully hides the data on the financial profit of their projects. We were forced to collect information bit by bit from different sources about the income of the game in different periods. Please pay attention. This video was not created to incite hatred towards Blizzard and the development team. Over the past eight years, they have done a great job to make Hearthstone a real phenomenon like no other. Blizzard has implemented a lot more positive things into the game than negative ones. Using Blizzard as an example, we just want to analyze the approach that is typical for most game studios. Hearthstone was released in March 2014. 
the game has literally revolutionized the digital collectible card game industry. By the end of the year, the game had 20 million registered accounts. According to a That's super data crazy. report, Hearthstone made 107. Dude, the first year it had 20 million registered accounts? That's fucking crazy. $73 million this year across all platforms. It was a great start. How did Hearthstone manage to make such a profit? Packs were the main source of income, in addition to the huge classic set. This year the first big expansion came out in one adventure. Team 5 was ready to generate regular content for the healthy functioning of the game. Blizzard's marketers have done a brilliant job of choosing the best monetization method and the most efficient pricing approach. Buying packs has been and remains very expensive, but at the same time affordable for most players. Purchasing a small number of packs has never given players a significant advantage, which forced them to spend more money. But if Blizzard had offered more loyal pricing for the packs, then they would have received significantly less profit. At the same time, the crafting system was fairly fair. Players could always get any card for free. A feature of 2015 was the release of Hearthstone for smartphones. The developers introduced the Tavern Brawls mode as well as monthly ranking rewards. The Bro. Y'all heard of Tavern Brawl? That's a thing? Bro. I forgot Tavern Brawl was a mode. <laughs> Y'all know there's a tavern brawl? Really? That's crazy. The number of new players has doubled. So how much money has Blizzard made? The answer to this question will surprise you. According to Super Data, for the year, the game's total revenue was only 240 million across all platforms. According to App Magic, Hearth This man said only 240 million. Stone has earned over 100 million dollars on mobile platforms. Agree, the result was not so impressive, despite the fact that the game was adapted for the fastest growing platform. Hearthstone failed to reach its full financial potential. So what is the problem? This year, players received two adventures that could be obtained completely free of charge, as well as just one set of packs. In other words, the game turned out to be too cheap for most Hearthstone fans, and even an increase in the audience did not help Blizzard significantly increase its profits. From a financial point of view, the game was not as effective as it could have been. The only full-fledged expansion this year was the Grand Tournament, which turned out to be rather unimpressive. Perhaps this also became a factor that prevented the increase in profits. Players don't want well-balanced cards, they want cards that change the game and do crazy things. 2016 was the best year in Hearthstone history. That's a good point. People in Hearthstone don't want balanced cards. People want broken things that do crazy things. I think that's like a huge complaint you see all the time on Reddit is like, this is too broken. This is too good. How did they allow this? But if you get like, if you create a set that just has okay cards and nothing's broken and nothing's crazy, you get stuff like Rastakhan's Rumble where everybody complained that the set sucks and none of the cards were useful. Like, do you understand how impossible it literally is to win? with like anything in regards to making everybody agree yes or no like this is good and or this is bad because if they make like right like Skullamance Academy was like arguably the best Hearthstone in regards to power level expansion that's ever come out or mini set or whatever like it was so good and everything was broken right and everybody was complaining how power creep everything's too powerful you die to combo decks how did it get like this hearthstone needs to go back and more board based and fair gameplay but then if you give them fair gameplay and balanced stuff that isn't crazy and bonkers and off the wall then you get the complaints that this meta is too slow it sucks the expansion's garbage it didn't matter why would you buy it i'm wasting my money the cards are useless like it is literally an impossible challenge like, I do not wish upon anybody to have to go through that as, like, a developer or something. Like, like no matter what you do, somebody's going to complain and you're going to get shit on. It doesn't matter. There's no winning. You literally can't win. It's an unwinnable game. No matter what stance you pick, you lose. And that's crazy. We saw a division of the main game format into Standard and Wild. Although not all players accepted this initiative positively. 
rotating meant that some of your old cards became useless in standard, which has become the main way to play. Of course, from the point of view of game design, this was a very important decision, but the plans of the developers caught the players by surprise. Team 5 made no attempt to communicate with the community to explain the full benefits of this approach. Unfortunately, this was the only innovation of the year. The first expansion, Whispers of the Old Gods, was a phenomenal success. According to Super Dad. Also, those expansions chat, look at these expansions, who remembers this? These were good times in Hearthstone. Whispers of the Old Gods, Karazhan and Mean Streets, what a time to be alive. Granted, the Knight and Karazhan, that, 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 that was a fucking horrible, horrible, horrible mini set. That mini set was fucking awful. That was trash. However, Whispers of the Old Gods and Mean Streets, in my opinion, were fantastic. Fuck it, who cares? Doesn't even matter. They, 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 what, what was your favorite here, guys? If you're watching this on YouTube, what, do we like Whispers or do we like Mean Streets? Just pretend Karasan didn't exist. Fuck that shit. Actually, if you're, you can leave it, but I'll just make fun oh, of you if you do. It was a phenomenal success. According to Super Data, Hearthstone was earning between $25 million and $45 million a month. At Jesus the end of the Christ. year, Blizzard managed to get an additional 10 million players and earn almost $400 million, more than $180 million was earned on oh mobile platforms. Oh my god. Hearthstone was the premier digital card million dollars. Do you see this? Over 50 million registered players, 395 million in profit, 180 increase over the previous year, over a, or less than 100 the previous. That's big. More than $180 million was earned on mobile platforms. Hearthstone was the premier digital card game that had no serious competitors. Analysts' forecasts for 2017 were extremely optimistic. The total projected revenue from digital card games was to be increased to $1.4 billion. And Hearthstone should have gotten the most of that pie. Such a rapidly growing profit did not motivate Blizzard to significantly modernize the game with new things. The consequences of this approach were not long in coming. It all started after the release of Meat Street of Gadgets and, in early 2017, Hearthstone became the Shaman Stone. Players in the Legend ranks of Ladder have encountered 60% Shaman decks during January season. In its turn, Patches the Pirate became the most uncontrollable card. It was one of the biggest crises in the metagame. The outdated approach to card balancing made matters worse. Players lost interest in card collecting and gameplay, which oh negatively God. impacted first quarter earnings. But that's not all. Expecting a significant increase in the market for digital card games, Blizzard decided to double its profits. Instead of alternating between adventures and expansions, they introduced three big expansions that significantly increased the cost of the game. A large number of important classic cards were sent to the Hall of Fame, making them unavailable in standard. Damn. These changes, once again. <laughs> they were basically like, all right, 2017, meta's getting to be a problem. Players are starting to get worried. Other competitors are popping up. How Blizzard hasn't really implemented anything in the past three years that would significantly change gameplay or make players that are like are currently playing want to keep playing. What update will they bring? They double down, baby. More expansions. <laughs> <laughs> buy 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 is a buyer's market out here boys spend more get it done buy more packs you fucking peasants again we're ambiguously perceived by many players look at the image with our old analytics the system of alternating adventures and expansions allowed players to spend less money to get the full collection, a premium player had to spend from $200 in 2015 to $355 in 2016, provided that a player completes daily quests. Following a change in approach, the cost of a complete Inflation. collection has been increased to nearly $500 a year. In return, packs received protection from duplicate legendary cards, and players received assurances that adventures would become regular and completely free. It's worth noting that three expansions per year is a justified approach in terms of gameplay development. But Blizzard did now we have three expansions a year and three mini sets a year. I'm dude, I can't even remember, dude. That's crazy that dude. Back when, I don't even know how. There was only three expansions, chat. There was only three expansions and then basically one balance change in between expansions. Dude, 
And then like they wouldn't even tell you about the balance changes. They would just do it. <laughs> it's crazy how much the game has evolved over like it, it, it is the way that they did things now. Like the way they did things versus now is just so different. It's like not even like, ugh, it's crazy. It's so crazy. And it's not that long ago. Did not seek to proportionally increase the balance of free resources. Since 2017, popular members of the community have increasingly begun to argue that the game has become too expensive. Blizzard's main goal was to increase income. The highlight of this year was the release of Knights of the Frozen Throne. This expansion was the most commercially successful and once again increased the audience of the game. According to Sensor Tower, in just 10 days, Hearthstone managed to earn $10 million on mobile platforms alone. The financial success of this expansion leaves no doubt that we will definitely see the return of Death Knights as a new set or even class. Judge for yourself, the theme of the Old Gods was also a commercial success and we have already seen their return in the Dark Moon Fair expansion. Despite the success of Knights of the Frozen Throne over the year, profits declined. Ooh. This data is confirmed by both Sensor Tower and Super Data Sources. Thus, Blizzard made the game more expensive, sold the most successful set in its history, at the same time expanded the game's audience and subsequently made less money. Something definitely went wrong, it seems that a chain of ambiguous decisions, an increase in the cost of the game, the lack of fundamental innovations and periodic crises in the metagame led to the launch of irreversible processes. Most likely, the players began to lose interest in Hearthstone and loyalty to Blizzard. Based on the financial results, we can assume that the players began to leave the game. In 2018, Blizzard finally thought about the new player experience. They <laughs> created a separate ranking system that had additional rewards. The main innovation of the year was supposed to be the release of the tournament mode, which was later cancelled for unknown reasons. Another year without significant ch That's crazy. In 2018 was when they were supposed to implement a tournament mode, chat. We still don't have it. There is literally no tournament mode in the deck- in the game. I don't know how- like... This is gonna dredge up all, like, the things I don't like about Hearthstone. Like, there's so many things that I just dislike so much, and it's just so dumb how they haven't done anything about it. And, like, I mean, even again, looking at mercenaries, the fact that you still can't use your excess mercenary coins, bro, the mode's been out over a year now. Like, imagine if you were opening up packs for cards, chat, a new expansion comes out, and you open up packs for cards, and you open the same card that you already had. And there was nothing that you could do with the excess card that you opened. It just goes in your collection. So it shows that you have like six of the same card. You can't disenchant it for dust. You can't do anything with it. You, you just have six of them. That's mercenaries still. That is mercenaries still. That is crazy. Changes. The poor implementation of even and odd mechanics has done a lot of damage to the metagame. But the main failure of the year was the release of Rostikon's Rumble, which had too little impact on the meta and directly affected next year's revenue. Blizzard even sent out a huge survey to players. They were definitely not happy with the results. Despite this, by expanding Hearthstone's audience by 30 million players, Blizzard managed to slightly increase revenue on mobile platforms compared to last year. Unfortunately, we could not find information about the total profit of the company. But, in our opinion, the developers failed to radically change the situation, they only masked the crisis with a very successful marketing solution. We know for sure that the new approach to pre-orders has greatly increased revenue this year. Bundles have become more diverse and attractive with new bonuses in the form of additional packs, legendary cards and hero portraits. An important fact is that the developers have not changed their approach to pricing pre-orders for four years. Something definitely forced them to change their strategy. Let's move on to my favorite year for Hearthstone, which unfortunately was a disaster. In 2019 adventures have gone from free to paid, and one of them has even become a must buy. This was a cover manipulation, to force players to spend more resources. But this led to extremely negative consequences. After the release of Saviors of Uldum, players began to leave the game. They had fewer resources and couldn't access the extremely Damn, what a year, that was a power set sources. too, you see that year? But this led to extremely negative consequences. After the Dude. release- 
The Scent of Dragon, Saviors of Uldum, and Rise of Shadows. Holy shit. What a fucking crazy year that was, too. Descent of Dragons and Rise of Shadows were just nuts in itself, and then Uldum had an insane amount of good cards, too. That's crazy, dude. of saviors of Uldum, players began to leave the game. They had fewer resources and couldn't Who access the extremely lackeys? expensive Highlander decks. The icing on the cake was the biggest reputational scandal in Hearthstone history. Blizzard punished esports player Blitzjung for voicing oh, his support yeah. of the Hong Kong protests during an official streaming of the Grandmaster event. The community has declared a boycott of Blizzard. By the way, after that, Blizzard had an attack of generosity, and they tried to regain the loyalty of the players with extremely generous gifts. The expansion phase of Saviors of Uldum has been one of the most generous. But that didn't help Blizzard keep its profits. According to the results of the year, revenues on the mobile platform almost halved. Hearthstone oh. was killing itself. The Blitzjung scandal was just an excuse to release the player's long-growing dissatisfaction. Cyclical problems in the meta and prolonged lack of balance. Loss of the competitive component due to the growth of random mechanics. Lack of dialogue with players and complete disregard for the needs of core audiences. Lack of significant innovations and a cooperative component. A that was crazy though. Their reaction to Blitzjung. You guys remember that, right? He put up the free Hong Kong sign. And then what they fucking banned him. They took away his earnings for winning. And they banned the casters. <laughs> How did that make any sense? They banned, they even fired the casters. Well, why was that their problem? Like, it was crazy. It, it, I was, uh, everybody was like shocked. I mean, that's why Admirable quit. Admirable stop. Admirable quit out of Blizzard. He said, you know, he's like, you guys are going crazy. He's like, you guys have no control over what you're doing. And Admirable just stopped casting and quit. And then fucking, uh, what was it? Um, Kibler. Kibler stopped doing events with them too. He said, I don't feel comfortable casting for you guys anymore. He's like, I don't like the decisions you're making. And both of those people had the ability to do that, right? Like, granted, it definitely probably hurt their wallet, but like, they were in a position to like cut Blizzard out of their life and not be financially ruined. But like a lot of Hearthstone streamers, you know, it's their livelihood, right? Especially like players like me. So like, you know, even if Blizzard does make a misstep like this, there's nothing like I can do about it, right? And a lot of players and a lot of viewers like harassed streamers for because they still streamed Blizzard games. But it's like, what, you want me to just quit? Like, that's not a possibility for me. Like, that's not, while it is an option, yes, I could. Is it feasible? Probably not. The cost of the collection and the absence of special conditions for the comeback of players who took a break from the game. They banned him and took away earnings for, for a year. Yeah, but then they cut it down and I think that inevitably games. they removed it or they also, made it like two months. They definitely they made it developer. not bad at all. All these reasons led to disastrous consequences. Having profits is the worst thing that could happen to a company. Don't get us wrong. Hearthstone was still the best in the genre, but the old flaws and problems were snowballing. Of course, the game was still profitable. The final decline of the game could occur in a few years, provided there were no significant innovations. But Blizzard was very lucky, as they had an unexpected surprise in store that slowed this process down. But that's a completely different story. By the way, we have a large amount of data that could be a continuation of this video. If you're curious about Hearthstone's current earnings, as well as the future direction of the game, please let us know in the comments or just click the like button below this video. Also subscribe it? to the channel if you uh, are not already it. a subscriber. Okay, so I'm glad we watched this first because like that leads right into this video.